So you're watching Taking the Biz, a channel dedicated to A-level business students and their revision. In this video, we're going to examine the topic of non-financial methods of motivating our workforce. And this links quite closely to some of the motivational theorists you may have studied, such as Hertzberg, potentially Elton Mayo and the Hawthorne experiment, and the higher levels of Maslow's hierarchy of needs as well. The ones that we might be questioned about in our exam include ideas like greater levels of delegation. So this might be motivational because we might develop more complex tasks to our workers. Rather than allowing them to complete the more menial basic tasks that may form the core part of their job role, if the business is able to delegate some slightly more complex tasks that may previously have been performed by a line manager, then it may be that this greater level of challenge and the variety in the work that this will provide workers with might just stimulate them more. And when workers are more stimulated, frequently they are more motivated. And from that motivation, they may become more productive. However, this may be quite a short-term way of motivating staff, because if we delegate the same task consistently to an employee, then it really just becomes another part of their job role that they're expecting to perform. And as they become used to that task, perhaps the level of challenge and the level of motivation that is derived from it may diminish over time. So we may make use of other non-financial motivators as well, such as potentially utilising consultation in the workplace. So rather than just prescribe decisions to employees, and rather than just notify them of changes that are being made inside the organisation, the business may engage in greater levels of employee consultation. So as changes to strategy are being made inside the organisation, the business devotes greater amount of time and resources to consulting staff about those changes. Now that may mean that staff are a little bit more open to change and this might motivate them as well. So as the business is adapting, as the business is going through strategic change, employees may feel more of a part of that change process because their needs are being listened to and they are being consulted on the, the direction that that change might take, which can be very motivational for people when they feel listened to and when they feel like they are contributing to changes that the business is making. Now, one method of non-financial motivation that links quite closely to Elton Mayo and the human relations school of motivation theories is the idea of teamwork. One of the outcomes of the Hawthorne experiments that Mayo oversaw the conduction of was that employees may be benefiting from higher levels of motivation when they feel that there is more of a communal social aspect to their work, when they feel that they are part of a group that is striving towards the same goals, that they're working more closely with colleagues that have a shared vision and a shared ownership of the tasks that they are producing. And it may be that without actually paying workers any extra, by reorganising the work that they do so that they perform their job in teams rather than performing them in isolation, employees may derive greater levels of job satisfaction and motivation from their job role and the business can reap the rewards of the additional productivity and quality that that facilitates. Perhaps a more recent addition to the, the different non-financial methods of motivation that businesses are utilising is the idea of flexible working practices. Ideas like allowing workers to work more flexible hours so that they can fit the hours of their work around their own personal lives. Particularly for employees that might have children of school age, for example, allowing them to work around those children's school hours might be very motivational to them, might mean that they are quite loyal to the organisation that they're very appreciative that the company is being flexible in the hours that they will allow them to work and in return 
they want to reward the business with higher levels of productivity. We might use other methods of flexible working as a source of motivation as well. Maybe allowing systems such as home working, where employees are entrusted with the responsibility of working from home for a proportion of their working week, again, might make workers feel very responsible, very trusted, and again, they may naturally be more motivated in their work, more loyal to the organization, and more productive in the work that they do as well. The final batch of non-financial motivators we might be, uh, might be find cause to write about in our exams are all ideas centered around the issue of empowering workers, trusting workers, seeing them as capable of doing more, seeing them as interested in the goals of the organization and being able to take on greater levels of responsibility and accountability and greater levels of challenge and variety in the work that they do. And the idea of empowerment links quite closely to McGregor's Theory X and Theory Y, and the view that some managers may have that workers are naturally co-invested in the goals of the organization, and they strive to have more power, they strive to have more accountability and responsibility. And empowerment is a way of giving workers that and some different techniques firms might utilize. Starting with what's known as job enrichment, where we might vertically extend the roles that our employees have. So we might give them perhaps more challenging tasks that employees elsewhere in the hierarchy might previously have performed. And we grow that person's job role, giving them greater variety in their work, but also a selection of more complex, responsible, challenging tasks, possibly with greater decision-making power at the heart of them, which might inspire and motivate those workers and make them more tied to the goals of the organization, allow them to be more creative, potentially more intrapreneurial, and overall more productive for the organization. Another system we might use is called job rotation, where we can inject greater variety into people's working day by allowing them to periodically rotate their position in the organization. Now, that may be done on quite a frequent basis, so we might ask employees to vary the job role they're performing, maybe week by week, or it may be done over a longer term. Every three months, we might rotate the department that a worker is part of in order to allow them to build up greater variety of skills, become more flexible in what they can offer the organization, but also to motivate them by providing them with greater variety in the work that they perform for the organization. And the final idea is to perhaps motivate people through what's called job enlargement. Now that doesn't involve giving them more complex tasks to do, but it does involve giving them a wider variety of tasks to do of the same complexity to the job role they're currently fulfilling. So perhaps for manual workers who we're using the division of labor with, who may have become a little bit of disenfranchised or a bit disenchanted with the work that they do, perhaps find it monotonous and not very stimulating, we might be able to give them an, an enlarged group of similar activities to do. And it may be that just that little bit of variety in the working day is what's needed to motivate them rather than additional financial rewards. We must remember with this topic that many businesses might utilize both financial and non-financial rewards in conjunction with each other, but this is an important topic to know for our exams and one that is examined very frequently. Hopefully this video has explained a little about it. We'll see you soon for some more tutorials.